you're looking for the way to get the most out of your time, I got the answers for you right here. Go ahead and stick around for another episode of Retrospective Wisdom coming at you. Hey everybody, welcome back to Retrospective Wisdom. Today we're gonna be talking about how to up your level of personal productivity. So, if you're somebody who's struggling with a thousand tasks and no way to get through them, or even more so struggling with identifying what those thousand tasks are to begin with, then I, I think that I might be able to help you out today. I get um, I get a little bit of flack, say, from my wife, actually from a couple of friends, kind of this busybody sort of um, vibe, I guess, that I give off, where I'm always trying to do something. I'm always trying to tackle a new challenge. I'm always trying to start a new business. Um, I have two specific businesses that are in the pipe right now that I'm, I'm really trying to start. They're going to be my first two legitimate businesses that I've actually gotten going. Um, I have a CNC business that, uh, that I'm starting. I bought a CNC machine. I've been working on learning the, the, um, the, the three software so that I can like figure out how to create the proper tool paths and, and do all the stuff associated with that. I'm going to make some videos about that at some point. And uh, in the house that my wife and I bought, there was an old restaurant. We're going to be renovating that and turning that into a lounge. And do a couple of projects, and then obviously YouTube, and then on top of that, it's constantly renovating something, and then it's trying to do something for the kids, and then it's building things, and then it's, you know, I do a lot of woodworking, I have a workshop, and so I'm always trying to do something, and I always kind of catch this vibe from friends of mine um, about my productivity and about how amped I am to always be a part of something, and it, I realize that this is, at some point, that this is just not a, a norm for a lot of people. I wake up every day and feel absolutely <laughs> overwhelmed by the um, mountain of things that I've laid before myself that I have to take care of in order to be successful. But at the end of the day, I'm always excited that I get to sit down and, and tick something, that there's even even some small portion of a task, all these micro steps leading up to a, to a macro accomplishment. I get to check these little boxes along the way. And so I kind of want to discuss a couple of the things that I do in order to maximize my own productivity and then maybe these will be things that other people can incorporate into their life that you specifically are able to say this is not something I do and this is something I should do. So number one, you have to know what it is that you want to accomplish. And this is very important because it's about knowing what you want to accomplish intrinsically. So there's a difference between the need to accomplish for extrinsic gratitude or gratification and intrinsic gratification, right? If you're doing something for the uh, extrinsic acknowledgement, whether it be like money or clout, a bunch of people around you supporting you, oh man, way to go, you did it. If you're doing it for that, then it's not truly um, a holistic intrinsic motivation. Now, obviously there's the argument that could be made about if there's an extrinsic motivation, then you have an intrinsic desire for that extrinsic um, item or gratification, or style of gratification, whatever it may be. That's an argument that can be made, but generally what we break things into is we say that you're intrinsically motivated or extrinsically motivated for something. So extrinsically motivated means something outside of yourself. So money, appreciation, um, social clout, the attention of others, whatever it may be, popularity, finance. Um, intrinsically motivated means feelings of self-worth, you know, personal value, sense of accomplishment, um, things that can be internally measured without an objective scale to balance them against. So you need to be intrinsically motivated to reach what your goal is and that's how you define what your actual goal is. Too many times people try to make plans for themselves and they say, you know what, I'm going to ABC and they want to do these things because they really like the sound of being the person who's done these things. Right, like you, you meet that guy when when you're a young guy or a girl. Right, I say that guy is a you know generality, but you meet that guy when you're younger who goes, man, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to college. And everybody's like, awesome, man. Like not a lot of people from here, wherever you're from, maybe maybe a lot of people don't go to college there. That's awesome, dude. Dude has no intention of going to college, but he really wants that support and he likes the way the support feels and he wants to go to college not because he wants to get a degree, not because he wants to move along a specific career path or. He wants to be the guy who said, I went to college, which means it's extremely hard to actually take those first steps because he's already gotten 
of the payoff before he's even taken his first steps just by telling everybody he was going to take the steps. And you meet a lot of people like this in life. And I don't think that it's, it's something that people always do on purpose, right? You have some people who are sort of uh, serial non-starters. But I think what it really comes down to is people have a hard time differentiating between do I want this because it's going to grow me as a person and bring me closer to the end state that I'm interested in? Or do I want this because I want people to see me as a person who's done this? And you have to be very honest with yourself when you're setting goals so that you can say, this is something that I want to be or I want to do for me because of the things it's going to bring into my life. Those things could be extrinsic, but the intrinsic motivation has to be present. It can't be, it, it doesn't have to be either or. They're not mutually exclusive. But it has to be intrinsically motivating for you to do this thing or you're never going to be able to push through the parts of it that absolutely suck to get through it. Now, obviously, these are for big life goals. I'm going to go ahead and tackle the basic ways that we would incorporate these same concepts into our day-to-day -day activities. Um, for if you just have an insurmountable amount of tasks and you're trying to figure out how to keep yourself motivated moving through them, I'm going to bring all of this together in the end and we'll go ahead and talk about it together. So, so you have your, your intrinsic motivation, right? You're like, okay, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to attack it. Now it comes down to breaking down this level 50 skill into a bunch of 50 level one skills and identifying the incremental steps that need to be taken to complete those specific tasks. You have to remember always, anytime that you're facing a new task, everything in this world is a collection of level one tasks. Everything. You could build a space shuttle. You just have to break it down to all the level one tasks. Tighten this screw, right? <laughs> Everybody can learn how to weld. Everybody can can learn how to build a car. Everybody can learn how to work on their own car. You can learn how to woodwork. You can learn how to pour cement. Any, anything that you want to learn how to do that you can put your hands on, you can learn if you understand how to break it down to the micro level steps. And luckily, this is the era of YouTube. This is the era of Rumble. This is the era of TikTok and of Wikipedia and online encyclopedias and search engines. Everybody can tell you how to create level one tasks out of level 50 tasks and how to progress between them. They have people that you can talk to on how to do this for any of these larger tasks. So that's, that's the second step, is you need to not allow yourself to be overwhelmed by how monumental the overall task may be and to realize you don't need to do all 50 tasks today. You need to do one. And as long as you're making progress at a greater speed than the natural breakdown of that process, then you will eventually complete it. Now, if you have a timeline that's associated with it, then you need to identify how many of these level one tasks need to happen per day or week so that the accumulated total of these level one tasks exceed the necessary effort to complete the overall task by the deadline, right? That's just kind of the basic math that would go into it. But if the only deadline is you, if you're the only one that's setting the standard for when you need to complete these monumental tasks that you're setting for yourself, whether it be looking for a new job. I need to build up the quality of my, of my CV or my, my resume, depending on where you live and what you call it. Uh, I, I need to build up a greater skill set so that I can move out of the job that I'm in into a job that I feel more satisfaction in. Or I'm in a relationship I don't like and I need to improve my relationship. Or I want to leave my relationship and I have to get all of my life in order before this relationship ends to make sure that I don't land on my face. Right? Whatever, whatever these, these tasks are that seem really hard to tackle, the most important thing is is that after you've identified that you're intrinsically motivated to make it happen, you need to break it down into small bite-sized steps to get from where you are to where you want to be. The third thing, and this is, I think, something that, that I know I personally struggle with, but if I had to say that there was, there was three, the third thing would be, don't be too hard on yourself about your rate of progress. It's very easy to feel like because you're not there yet, you never will be. And you can't allow yourself to fall into this pit of negative thinking that says, because I'm overwhelmed, I'm not making the progress that I want to make, which means maybe this isn't for me, and create an excuse for yourself that says like, ah, man, I guess because I haven't done it, that means I'm never going to do it. Why do I even try? It's so easy to quit anything. And it's so hard to push through that stress and you have to remember to give yourself permission to struggle. Just because you're struggling doesn't mean you're failing. And just because you're failing doesn't mean you've failed. 
Everything is rescuable if you are intrinsically motivated. You can break it down into the necessary steps to get from where you are to where you want to be, and you can consistently follow this path. But you have to remember to take it easy on yourself. I guarantee, no matter who's watching this, I, without even knowing you, without even meeting you, and this is not like some, some flowery goodness, because I don't believe that everybody's a good person, <laughs> and I don't believe that everybody's the best version of themselves that they can be. But no matter who you are, you're experiencing stresses in your life that are unique to you that nobody else can objectively measure. And so that means that you cannot measure your status or your success or your progress against the status, success, and progress of other people if you're going to include the way that you interpret the stress in your life. I don't care if you're a millionaire, I don't care if you're middle class, upper middle class, lower class, living in poverty, everybody is dealing with stressors in their lives. Everybody is dealing with um, external stresses that are impacting their ability to complete whatever these tasks are that they're trying to do to improve their lives. You are not without excuse for feeling overwhelmed, but the feeling of being overwhelmed is not an excuse to allow yourself to give up on your processes. Give yourself permission to feel stress, figure out how to deal with your own stresses. I, I got a whole litany of ways that I can, I can share with you guys on, on how I deal with stress, but give yourself permission to pause, to regroup, and to refocus and don't take setbacks as failures. When it comes to applying these to your micro tasks on a day-to-day -day level and not feeling overwhelmed, there's a little bonus, because I think that this, this video obviously is far more about tackling those tasks in your life that just seem insurmountable. And then you look and you see all of these people tackling these tasks that for you, they just, they just seem mind-blowing. How do these people like, manage to go from where they are, which is where I am, to where they are now, which is where I feel like I'll never be. And this is how. They're intrinsically motivated, they identify the steps they need to take, and they consistently stick with it, and they don't murder themselves psychologically or emotionally, um, or they don't damage their own self-esteem by attacking themselves every time that there's a setback. That's what you need to do, and you stick with it consistently, you follow these three things, and you will move forward. It's not a question of if. 1% progress every day means that in 100 days you made 100% progress. A half a percent progress means in 200 days. Depends on the task you're looking at, whether it's learning a language or doing school or building a relationship with somebody. This is what it is. So when it comes down to how to handle your day-to-day -day activities, because again, it's very easy to look at your day-to-day -day tasks and go, man, I have 30 things to do today. Like I tell you for me, right? Like I, I, I have a full-time job, I have three kids. I have, technically have, I have four kids, but when I say three kids, I mean that there's three living in the house. I love you, son. He doesn't live here with me. He's, <laughs> he's grown up and moved out. But um, I have three small children that live in the house. I have my son that lives in the United States. I have my wife. Um, we have our renovations. We have all these things that we're doing. So every day is chaos when it comes to a calendar, when it comes to a day planner, right? I mean, it's just, it always feels like there's no time to take care of anything. And yet we still manage to take care of everything. And I'm sure everybody's got their own version of this, where whether you have kids or not, whether you have businesses or not, whether you have whatever you have going on, everybody has this, I'm sure, feeling, unless you're one of the lucky few. If you're one of the people that are lucky, like when I was in college, where I literally just had to wake up and go to the gym and spend time with friends, dude, best time ever. But also one of the least satisfying times in my life as far as like my feelings of self-worth. But that's a, a different, a different uh, video, I think. But I would say what you need to do to finally get to it, so I'm rounding out here, but you kind of follow the same process. What is it that needs to be accomplished by the end of today, the end of this week, the end of this month? What is the goal that we're trying to achieve? Now for this, intrinsic or extrinsic motivation can almost be skipped because these are micro tasks in and of themselves. But you identify what do I need to get done today? What can wait till tomorrow? What needs to get done by Wednesday, Friday, Sunday? Sit down and write it out on a piece of paper. Today I'm gonna do laundry. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to do one load of laundry a day, or I'm going to do laundry Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm going to do laundry Tuesday, Thursday, which means Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to go ahead and take care of these other three cleaning tasks. I'm going to clean all bedrooms on Monday. Wednesday, I'm going to clean the bathrooms. Friday, I'm going to go ahead and clean the common rooms and the, the front entryway. And Saturday, Sunday are going to be my off days. And on these days, I'm going to do maintenance, only cleaning up after myself as I go. And then for each of these micro tasks, I have them now broken down into days. 
Now on Monday, I give myself a light schedule. So like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna wake up at seven instead of waking up at eight. It sucks to lose an hour of sleep, but that's an hour of productivity that I can make. And this is something I think is a problem people run into is they just don't want to cut into their free time to take care of their responsibilities. But if you start looking at your life that your free time is only free after your responsibilities have been taken care of, then it makes it a lot easier, one, to appreciate your free time and to find yourself during your free time not feeling like you're failing yourself because you haven't completed doing the things that you need to do to take care of yourself and your surroundings. But all these rules, rules still apply, right? You can skip the intrinsic, extrinsic motivation concept when it comes to your day-to-day -day tasks, figure out what they are, break them down into one level, and make sure that you're making more progress on the tasks than the tasks are making um, towards entropy, right? <laughs> Everything's in the process of breaking down. So if you don't do a load of laundry every day, you're gonna end up with two loads tomorrow that have to be done. So make sure that whatever you have to do that's the bare minimum to keep up, you can do that plus 5%, plus 10%. Do just a little bit more than maintenance and in your day-to-day -day life, you'll always be ahead of the curve. So it applies just as simply. So I hope this was able to help somebody. Um, I, there, there's definitely so many more things that can go into this. I might even make a second video about this as a follow-on. Um, the idea of, of giving yourself more tasks than is possible to complete. Like I think, I think I'll do another video on that. Um, in fact, you know what? That's the next video I'm gonna make. So <laughs> look forward to that about the, uh, the concept of, of planning out your tasks and giving yourself more to do than is necessary. So it's a good thing to do. But anyways, guys, thanks again for tuning in. I hope that, uh, that you enjoyed the episode. I look forward to seeing you next time. Again, please like, subscribe, and support the channel. So, see you guys next time. Bye.